but if you upload it to your channel and connections and obviously tag me in so on a couple of occasions i've i've gone out to the split screen so i'm can be seen um and then um yeah okay what can we do then do you think it's worth having a french language facebook group yeah i think so okay let me give you um actually um so i sent you the logos in english i uh, that oh that's that, fine because that's very you, you we understand it very well fine yeah because i mean the the logo the me too logo mm -hmm. was here also was in mm -hmm. france all over so social me too that's very very clear for yeah. everybody yeah, yeah that that's really not the issue okay brilliant so um what I have done as well is last time I was talking to to two of the ladies, Alessia and Gazelle, I thought so this social me too has evolved from LinkedIn me too. And then it's sort of yeah, so it's changing all the time. But I've now bought the um domain name socialmeetoo.org. And I'm thinking, see. I don't know what it's like to be in France, but here we, I look at the BBC. So there's lots of other pieces of information, but if it breaks surface and hits the main news, then I look at it. And um, so you've got racial abuse of black football players. You've got abuse of people taking the knee you've got uh reality tv stars and, and people in the public eye getting death threats rape threats uh murder threats daily you've got female politicians and women in power getting that sort of uh horrific it, you know it's not just so it gets to a point where it's not just people we're trying to scam people just sending out thousands of messages but it gets up to a level where people are threatened people need police protection and people are are, are getting real world consequences um, we've got that here also yeah so that's a problem then you've got all so there are lots and lots and lots and lots of different fights to try and get um something from uh, the, the social media companies. Now, I was, uh, let me, I did a post, let me find it, hold on, because when I was recording last night, I brought the panel's attention to this. Okay. So, I don't know who Lizzo is, really, but what's, obviously, she's well-known, and the social media companies, Facebook and Instagram, removed abusive comments. Well, uh, yeah. So that says to me, so social media companies won't do anything. They don't care. They, if you're uh, blocking someone, and in fact, actually, last night, this lady said that she'd emailed linkedin because she had this abusive uh, sexual videos and stuff and they said it's not against our membership policy or it's not it's not against our user policy they haven't breached any uh, and that's what happens when you're a woman on your own or even a woman in, with 10 so what we need is we need several hundred several thousand people exactly yeah and then we can put leverage on on the social media companies because i think their power comes from the idea that they represent the world and there's a lot we can do so i did a post you know do you use google in france or have you got your own yeah yeah oh, okay yeah. so how much of the internet do you think google gets access to 90 percent 80 percent 100 percent well i would say 90 percent 90 percent 
After we finish, Google this, but I'll tell you what you're going to find. If you Google how much of the in, of the of the web does Google index, so it comes up in its search results, four percent. Really? Really. So you've got people that think when they search on Google, what they're finding is the truth. Whereas in reality, what you're finding is not even representative of the truth. If it was 50-50, the flip of a coin, that's pretty good. But less than 5%. Oh, gosh, I'm mm, so surprised. Mm, and, and do it because, you know, the fact I Googled the answer, the irony is not lost on me. But yeah. So, and there's the, everything that leads down from the social media starts with the way boys are educated. Now, I am different because, so I wasn't, I wasn't picked up for nine months in a children's home. I'm slightly odd in that behavior. I've got various behaviors, obsessive behaviors. When I went to the first year of secondary school, so I was 12 and I got in trouble for lifting up the girls' skirts or squeezing their bums. And yeah, it's, but the thing is, the head, the head teacher brought me in and he explained to me that perspective, the perspective of the victim. Now, yeah. it turns out, so I'm dyslexic and I experience the world from multiple perspectives all the time. And they all fold in on each other. So I, in my head, although I see the still world, perceptually, everything is fluid. So I took that lesson. And since that point, I haven't even stepped into a woman's personal space without her express consent. Now, <laughs> the consequence of that maybe uh is that in 49 years i've only been in relationships for two in total mm. yeah so i sort of i've swung back the other way because i realize now and every day we see like the the the, the story at the bbc again that a girl in secondary school so 12 and above is net so i was doing that they're now being asked for naked photos and, and the semi, semi naked photos. And the trouble is that boys are asking for this expressly so they can share it amongst their friends, that they do it so they can brag. So a girl's image is, it's not, well, look, when we were young, it would have destroyed a person, a woman. And maybe it's less now because it's normalized 